Well, hey, welcome everybody. How's it going, Marty? Hey, it's going great, John. You doing hey. any traveling this week? How was your week? Uh, uh, yeah, I might be going to St. Louis, uh, you know, but uh, no, this week I uh, was oh, this busy. Last, this last week, this last week. Oh, this last busy week? week for you? Yeah. I don't think I went anywhere. No, I just, just went around town, but I uh, cool. You know, did a lot of stuff. But hey, Land, so today, Land. yeah, right. So, um, well, kind of. <laughs> not really yeah, not John. I mean, hey, 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 Marty, I got one for you. Maybe we should address the elephant in the room, you know, because today is a big day. Or wait, should we address the donkey in the room? Wait, the elephant or go. the donkey in the room? I don't know. Never yeah, mind. It's... Okay, so everybody, we're moving on. That's about it, right? Good yeah, job. Yeah, I didn't get one of those. Exactly. They didn't. They didn't have one for me. But you know what? I had a great. I had a great experience. Um, yeah, as as was mine. It was smooth. Right. Just get in, get out. Doesn't it feel good though? And a beautiful weather for it. So oh, I mean, it was, couldn't it was have been a, a better day. day. Could not yeah. have been a better day. Well, hey, so we've got this um, with special guest today. Um, uh, Zach's with us um, from Special Vision Inc. And he's got a roast level sensor uh, that he called, it's called Roast Vision. And uh, we're giving one away on the show live tonight. That so all you have to awesome. do. I know it's That's like awesome. it's like money, and if you're like a starting up barista or something like that, go ahead and sign up for this. Just and or anybody, yeah. I don't care who you are, as long as you're in coffee, and you could take it to someone that you work with or you work alongside and be like, "Hey, owner of coffee shop, I'm really into coffee, and I've got this really cool device, and I want to be in your QC lab because you know I'm really into this." You know, like that's a reason to try this out because then you have like a you know something to talk about. But and this is a really cool product. Oh. All you have to do is go to at Espresso Vision on Instagram. And uh, in the comments, you're just comment, add a, uh, tag a friend. I'm kind of new at all this, you know, like social media stuff, but tag a friend <laughs> and then subscribe to this YouTube channel, Coffee Tech Talk Tuesday with Marty and John. You know, we're, we're almost famous. Like, well, you know, we almost have a hundred subscribers. Hey, we, we're <laughs> working famous on it. In my book. We're, we're, we're and working then, on it. And then all you have to do is say something nice and friendly in this comment section at, on YouTube. And then at the end of the show, we're gonna we're gonna select a winner, uh, Zach. We're gonna use some crazy algorithm like a plus or minus sign and numbers, and we're gonna select someone out of that Instagram thing. So you know, only one time matters. You know, like basically, I I, I posted a bunch. I'm not gonna win. I don't count. So yeah, it's if you be... you win, you need to pass it on to. to well, actually, you know, I like actually the already next person. I won. I already won. Zach Zach won for me. He he won me. Uh, that this. is a win win. Yeah, and, and I've had a lot of really fun, uh, you know, uh, analysis with this this week, actually. And so I went, I went to my friends awesome. over at the coffee roaster and we did some, we did some stuff. But, uh, cool. you know, what do you usually ask me about stuff? Like, what's the first thing we talk about? Well, you know, you, you're, you're this, you travel. I think you're like these guys that go out and they, they, they they're, you're a picker, but you're a picker. Yeah. <laughs> but I, okay, so all I do, all I do, Marty, is I pick on, on, no, I'm not going to tell you. Never Coffee mind. Stuff. No, no. Right. I'm yeah. not going to give you any clues. You know what okay. I do, and okay. I know what you do, but we're not going to talk about it. So, yes, so we're, we're American pickers, and we're car coffee tech talk <laughs> folks riding in cars with, with other technicians doing crazy stuff. What's yeah, that you got behind you? Is that new? Yeah, you know, you're always buying and selling stuff. Well, I, I just picked this up. Um, some people had it. It's a little Astoria, but you know, and it's in great shape. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's is that is that no. plated in gold? Is <laughs> that gold well, plated? The, the the gold stripe looks great. Dang. Look at the sponge That's, paint. I now, like that. Story, is it like sponge like actual like it does it have some like like um, you can feel it you can elevation feel it. to it? Is it like a little, little three hundred three hundred uh uh you know microns? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what microns there. it is, but there is a little bit of uh, a rise to it. It's like it, nice. It's factor. I've seen several others like this. You know what? You know I want you to do with it, right? I know you want. You know what I want you to do with it? What color it uh, should be? Oh, please tell. Tie dye. Tie. Have you ever tie dyed tie -dye. an yeah. espresso machine? No, but but <laughs> I saw that on a on a on the Instagram post that I posted I did that. Today. That was me. Someone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't notice who it was. Um, uh, but yeah. I'm thinking we might be able to dip that. You know how they dip and get the swirls and stuff. I yeah. May, I may may try that and then coat it over with something. So that'd be cool. But you know, it's a nice segue into what we're going to be talking about. This this color, I, I hate that color. I, I I don't like it at all. 
Oh, I've got some colors that are coming up. Like, but, uh, yeah, that will be really interesting in coffee. But so, the, yeah. the, the deal is this, this color doesn't make this machine work any better, or any worse. You know, it, it's, it's, the machine is what it is, regardless of what well, the color we is. Could, we could get a little philosophical about that, but we won't. Well, as philosophical, and that's a big word for me, is- uh, It starts is with a P, I think. Some, some color thing- And you, you can know. make it into a keychain if you want to ruin it, but like you can, you can make it into a keychain. So uh, Boston University, I think he's wearing a hat and I think he actually went there. He just didn't get a thrift store. But shooting with Marty, this is this is for you. All oh, right. here we go. Here we go. Okay, so I had a, I had a, a Facebook message uh, from a guy uh, who, who's been coming off of his espresso machine. And it yeah. was kind of like trying to think of like um, whether or not it was sort of like the, the one time, like a couple episodes ago, we had the, the chatter sure. box. Like uh, when there's a basket. Yes. Yep. I see that. Where did that stop, Dietrich? I'll just I'll just start this over. How long has it been down? I think we are Can live. Can you hear my audio? Oh, yeah. We're all good now. All right. Yes, Sorry. We are Thanks, all you live. guys, hey. for holding tight with us because yeah, I... they're, they're every once in a while when it's a big, a big day for YouTube or streaming or anything like that, YouTube streams can drop. And I've Is there something, and I, and I know that, big going on? Yes, I, I we are having things. our show. We're having <laughs> we're our having show our tonight. Show. We are, and Zach we is on. We are right. the big thing. All right. We so let's get to it. Let's get to it. We got, we got, we got a lot to talk about. Marty, this is crazy. I love this. I love I'm, this. I'm pretty sure I'm getting, this is what he said. I'm pretty sure I'm getting stray voltage and it's chattering and trying to open it intermittently. Uh, when it makes the noise, I manually open it by turning on the switch to either group and it stops it, opens up. And he's like, this is probably what it is. This looks like a fill valve. Um, it is then, a fill valve. And is this the problem making that noise? And he said it was more like a basketball game uh, and not like a buzzer rather than yeah. the, 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 the more chatter on on the other uh, uh the contractor yeah. right so what's going yeah. on here and uh well here's here's what we've discovered on this and this can be actually can be cured um i don't know how deep you want me to go into this but these uh, valves, uh, 30 seconds okay i'll make it quick these <laughs> valves are designed and not in the coffee industry but in the the hydraulic industry to have a, an input and an output and what it, it's designed to do is that if it's put installed correctly, the pressure side or the input side helps the plunger stop. So the more pressure, the more the pressure wants to stop. Rather than if you put it in backwards, you could exceed pressure enough to lift the plunger up off and it leaked by. And we don't want it leaking by on a machine and flooding the boiler. Um, and so, um, with that being said, if they're put in physically correct, when that plunger comes up and water is rushing down through past that plunger, you need whatever that coil is rated at, you need to be feeding it that voltage to be able to lift that securely up out of that hole because the water rushing down is gonna to wanna to drag kind of a Ventura effect. It's gonna to wanna to drag that plunger down and it causes it to chatter when it does that. And so what you'll find almost 100% of, of the time when we see these, you'll see that coil is rated from 220 to 240 or 220 to 230. And if you actually test the voltage on the wall, if your building is three phase, you're getting 208, give or take a little bit. So you're, you're below voltage. So that magnet that you're creating with the electromagnetic coil there, uh, electromagnetic coil, um, isn't as strong as it is designed to be because you're not feeding it the power it was designed to be. So the okay. quick fix yep. is to yep. order a 208 volt, 200 to 208 volt coil yep. and replace just the coil and that should correct it. Some guys have turned it around and, and that stops it 
but you're risking every time you go up to nine bar with your pump to pull a shot, that 140, 150 PSI, whatever that's creating there, has the potential of leaking by, putting some extra water into your steam boiler, and over a period of time, now you've got a flooded boiler. Does that make sense? It does. And so I would say the first recommendation is to A, uh, check your building. Check, check your voltage. Right. Your meter, and then, check your and voltage. then B, if you don't want to, or if you can't correct that, or you can correct it, uh, then then go get a, a coil that is rated to uh, uh, to that to lower voltage. To, to lower voltage. So the one okay. on the right will not work. That, that's it's not a bad coil. It's just uh, it just doesn't have the right um, power. Basically. Correct. Okay, and that happened in Omaha yeah. too. The same machine, uh, a different building, but the exact same uh, instance. So this, this is great. Uh, this happens often. We've got another one for you. Um, okay. If this uh, works. There we go. This is a video. I'm hey, just gonna. That's a, that's a. Adrian, that's can I go ahead and play this brewer. one? Or? Hey, I win. Okay. Are you, okay. Yeah, that's um, that's that would be quite uh, annoying sound in your kitchen. Um, yeah. So what is what is that? What's going on with this uh, bun brewer then? Well, it, it depends on. There's two on each one of those sides of that brewer. There's there's two solenoid coils, um, yep. solenoid valves. Yep. One of them is what they call their dump valve or the brew valve, and it's a magnetic coil, just like that other coil we were talking about. Yep. But it's energized electronically. It creates a magnet, pulls a plunger up, um, and it it opens the valve to brew your coffee. There's another one. Actually, some of them, there could actually be two more. There's another one that's a bypass valve. It does the same thing, but it's putting water next to the, the coffee bed and allowing it to go down, on down into the uh, into your mm -hmm. shuttle or your brewing yeah. container. Um, and the third one is could be a safety lock that locks the funnel in place so mm -hmm. that you physically can't pull it out. Um, different models have different configurations. Some have that lock, some don't have that lock. Mm -hmm. But basically, I think and now what we... I'm hearing on that through my little earpiece. Yeah. Did you have a did you have a hint to give give on that? No, I, I everything was brewing fine on it. It's just like when it yeah. started to add water. It started to make that that extra little pitch of, of buzz. Okay, what what the bottom line is those those coils can get uh, loose internally. Okay. okay. And you're sending it uh, AC voltage, so it, right. it's going to be you know yep. vibrating yep. regardless, and and most of the time you can't hear it. But so is it, is it is it on its way to failing? Is it, it on its way it, to failing? Pretty much. It, it's on its way to be annoying. Um, yeah, and, okay. and ultimately it can fail, I guess, if you go long enough, but okay. it's going to be much more annoying than anything. Okay. Um, but what's happening is it's just generated enough space in there from that coil and the metal structure that's holding it in. Um, but what you have to do is listen to it. Is it during the bypass or is it during the brew? There's no um, bypass. Okay. Then it's, then it definitely is a brew coil. And okay. the net net fix to that is, and it's not that expensive, is to just replace that brew valve on top. See, look, tons of brew valves and solenoids. That was easy. You got it. You nailed it. This one, what machine is this? Go for it. You got five seconds on this one. Four, <laughs> three. Oh, you're, 
Yeah, I I don't know. That, that could be a you got a water tank. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Are I've you not sure? seen that. I, I don't know that I've seen that schematic. Oh, I have seen that schematic before. Okay. Yeah, no. that's that's a <laughs> tell me what that's, it is. That's a that's a, that's a Curtis Brewer. That's a Curtis okay. tank. Yeah, yeah. Um, could actually even be depending because I use that exact same tank on a lot of machines. Okay. Um, uh, it could could be a, a a gold cup brewer. It could be a. Uh, um, Does that help at all? Oh uh, yeah, I, I, that helps helps a lot. You I, you want you want one of these? Um, this you, 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 seraphim. Just tell me what Sarah, it's a seraphim. Um, what? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, What's a seraphim? It, it's a it's a brew pour over station. That looks really cool. There, that um, looks it looks like a like a swan, that is. Uh, some call it a cobra head. It's a sure. It's a cobra head. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. swans are a little bit more beautiful than a cobra, and it, it seems like I'd rather drink like, you know. <laughs> never mind. I don't want to drink anything that comes out of either a cobra or a swan. Moving on. <laughs> no, that that's exactly what that is. That's great. That's um. That's those beautiful. Are actually, pretty cool, and they're pretty elegant on a on a counter. Um, you you, the, that, you did pretty good on that one. I mean, I thought the, you would. I thought you're going to nail it with the which with with, with just the schematic. The, yeah, but there you go. It's a nice little uh, nice little thing there. Hey Zach, I'm going to welcome hey, uh, Zach. Zach to the show here. I haven't even like pronounced your last name because I didn't even want to try it. <laughs> What's your last name, Zach? Halverson. Halverson. That was easy. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. it hey, well, it welcome like to the it. show, Zach. How Thank are you, you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. great. It's uh, where welcome. are you right now? San Diego. California. Okay, so it's just about getting dark there. Just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and so what's what are you doing there, and why did you go to Boston University? Yeah, I mean it's it was well, a little a too long warm. Story. Yeah, a little too warm in San Diego. The weather, you know, I mean it's <laughs> the, the the cold in Boston is hard to beat, but uh, yeah, definitely a long story. Well, hey, so like um, this is a logo, and there's it's an E, but I think it's also a bean. I just noticed that. Exactly. No, That's and been, then, good call. Yeah. Yep. What what color is that brown <clears throat> on your on your on your on your uh, roast? Uh, uh, you know that's a good question. Roast. I'd have to uh, I'd have to check it with something. Not too sure. I might have to ask the designer that made it. But yeah, okay. I could tell you the color code. I could tell you a hue. There's a lot of ways I could I could talk to you about the color. So you made this, right? Yes. Are, are we gonna are we gonna talk in a little bit with the slides that, that you gave me that on how how you built this? Definitely, yeah. Some of the slides, hey, and I got a couple here too. Zach, yep. All right. Can will your color analysis analyze whether this looks good or not? You know, I think that's that probably break the sensor. You know, kind of okay. like a broken, yeah, broken mirror there. So I, I wouldn't want to try that. But wait, so I want to, I want to talk about like why, why this is one of my favorite topics in in coffee from day one. It's, it's been, you know, I've always thought that it's kind of hard and you know I, I've got a degree in cultural anthropology which you know well you know I'm in coffee so uh anyway uh we, we talked about like you know how using an expression of words is, is it's beautiful it could be it could be very expressive and really attractive but it could be very confusing if you're talking about is that an Italian roast or is it a French roast or or, or whatnot so I, I uh and then I, and then we came across like you know you know paint you know, there are paint by numbers and there are actually <laughs> different levels of, of, of types of, of color uh, code. So, and, and you know, was it first introduced with, you know, through that, through, uh, you know, doing quality control with coffee is with, uh, with, uh, with Agtron, Javalytics, all these other brand names of, of these, uh, you know, basically uh, I think it's a color refractometer of some sort. Is that what you would call it? Maybe? More or anyway, less, yeah. There's a couple different, couple different gonna, major categories, yeah. You're going to tell me all about that, right? Sure. But back in the day, there was this thing called the Specialty Coffee Association of America. And by the way, uh, I'm an SCA US uh, North Central Regional uh, Chapter Coordinator. <laughs> um, there you go. And Marty, you work at Workbench Coffee. So I'm there nobody. you go. Kansas City, you, you're everybody all in one. There you go. And I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska, all here. Um, so these are the color. Uh, this is this is a. Uh, I, I made this, uh, in, you know, uh, based on the old SCAA color tile, yeah. and uh, they, they should kind We're of represent. We're all familiar with that. That's great. Right. So this is uh, the little chart. It says coloring, coloring with numbers versus coloring with uh, words. And um, 
this got on Twitter once, and then this guy Nick Cho put it up on his Twitter, and then everybody like this is the this is the only time I've gotten close to even being like anything that I've ever made, you know, gets more than a hundred likes. Um, <clears throat> so on on ninety five, the color tile this it, this it's it's a hundred is basically white, and zero is basically uh, uh, you know pitch black, and ninety five. Um, you know, I, I was trying to, you know, kind of be a little snarky here and a little bit sarcastic about what, so like white coffee roast uh, level popularized in Coeur d'Alene in the late 90s. There's a little joke there, but great for those who like grassy teas. And uh, it, some people call it un, un, unincorporated. Um, and 85, you can read through that. I, you know, I, I don't have time to read through all that. Like suburbia, Riga, uh, Regionopolis, that's a hard one to say. And we have like your city roast, which is like number 75. It's like back in the 80s, commercial roasters used that to uh, retain moisture weight in order to lower costs. And then now it's used to highlight unique qualities like apricot, cherry, straw, and wood. Some people like that, right? So, and then some people like the 65, some people like the 55, which, you know, I would call it full city, uh, and then there's mega city or whatever else you want to call it number way too dark for some just right for others and those you know dark not you know just not dark enough for those left over um good with or without adding stuff uh you know watch out though it might have a lot of rose character to it and then 45 you want you, you want cream and sugar in your coffee no i mean you want cream and sugar in your coffee and then 35 and then 25 is is where you know you're you're like well past the second crack it's it's pretty much almost charcoal level right so that's the sda they had the color tiles and you, you'd put up these little piles next to them and you try to like with whatever kind of light that you have uh communicate and that, that wasn't too bad but it was a little messy and it was it wasn't as accurate you know depending on the type of uh light you have so then people like you come along zach and you know and and also actron javalytics and they have different ca calibrations and whatnot and i want to kind of talk about what what that's about because you know agtron alone right marty has a uh, gourmet and they have commercial and sure. gourmet is a little bit more accurate than the than the um than the commercial is that well, correct? there's like, more numbers right um, right more numbers but it still goes from zero to a hundred and um so Zach, why did you choose your scale and what, this is great, this, I love this. It's, it's basically from charcoal to almost not roasted. What, what are you doing here and how did you create your, 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 uh, your scale on this? Sure, yeah, so, so similar to you know, some of the other, and I, that's actually funny, I do remember seeing that diagram last summer when I started working on this did not connect the dots that, that you made that you know, five years ago. So that's actually oh, kind of yes. pretty, pretty crazy to see that. Because I remember, you, I remember seeing that when I was starting the uh, starting the research. But yeah. so here, what we have on the screen, and I have a couple other ones, but these are some some sample wheels that I used. Okay, there we go. So there's some sample wheels that I used earlier in the summer, um, and I essentially instead of having to test say 30 or 40 different samples as you can see here manually, you know, maybe take me a minute to do each measurement. It's very tedious. You know, I would put a motor or a servo in the center with some arms that would articulate around. We have a video of showing I was, I was doing some, some fridge testing. This is another arrangement, testing some different standards. But this was really just to speed things up, you know, because if you're designing and testing, I, I tested a few different sensors um, over the summer. And, and, you know, I needed to take three measurements of each sample multiple times, and that's 20 samples. It could take me days or hours to do this manually. But building this system, it, you know, it only took two, three, four minutes. And then I think on the next slide, there's maybe some examples of, uh, I think the next time might be the video, but. Yeah, I think we're going to, cool we're going to, we're going to jump into the video real quick. And then I want to back up a little bit and just talk about, um, you know, what brought you to this, uh, this uh, idea. And I, I think I missed the pre-conversation. I went to go grab something to eat in the chick in the, in the kitchen while you guys were talking. And I want to talk just quick couple minutes about that, but let's watch this video real quick that uh, kind of explains uh, what sh what's going on here with the, uh, and you can explain what that is. Sure. Take it away.
All right, so I think we saw a couple videos there. Uh, That's pretty impressive. One Actually. of them was how to use this, uh, kind of like just, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then the other video uh, kind of showed basically um, um, this arm that was going across and I, I think like snapping photographs. Can you explain what that is, uh, what, what you were doing there? Sure, yeah, so this one, that sensor in this specific video was a, uh, it's not the one that we use in the device. This was one of the earlier tests that I was doing with a separate sensor. Um, but this one, this was in a fridge. I was testing for temperature stability. So I want to make sure that if it's in a cold environment in the winter somewhere, that it's not having different readings, you know, based on compared to, you know, normal kind of standard temperatures or a very hot day. Um, so that was actually in a fridge. I would, you know, close it up, take measurements for an hour as the fridge cooled down and then, and then do the same thing in the oven. But then, uh, you know, what's on the screen here, this is later when I was testing you can, there's some photos on, on the Instagram, but I think I had a wheel with eight sensors at a time measuring something like 20 samples, taking three measurements at once, two with the LED on, just all kinds of combinations. And in five minutes, 15,000 data points, wow. which would otherwise take me probably a week, you know, nonstop. And, and then this is just a, a quick explanation without getting into technical. These are some of the different wavelengths or specific colors keep it simple that, that it's looking at. And then crunching these, I think on the next slide, this was just some of the raw data representing you know, what 15,000 points. And from there is, is kind of how we first designed and picked the right sensor to use, but also determined our scale. And going back to you know, what, what John had, had created, the 35 for us, similar to I think it was the 95, 35 for our sample beams that we calibrated with, that we test and validated, 35 is right when first crack occurs, just barely. So we set that upper limit really at a white coffee, right? So there's not many people that are going to be roasting to a 36, right? 36 wouldn't work on our sensor, it's out of bounds. But we set the 35 as, yeah, first crack with our setup is, is happening. 202C, it's not, not accurate, right? It's an approximate just from our setup. Of course, different beans go through first crack at different times, different probes and, and such like that. Sure. So then 35 is first crack and approximately 14 was second crack, you know, and, and we kind of said it that, yeah, four or five, you're hitting about 468, 470, at least with our setup. Of course, the temperatures, it's tough to explain with so many different roasters, but really that anything in the zero, one and two range is ash. It's close to it, at least, you know, you might have some, some good flavors depending on how you roasted, but in the 34 to 35, I mean, it hurts your grinder. It hurts you to hear your grinder grind it when it's when it's that light. So that's kind of how okay. we set those endpoints. And then in between, you know, I could talk a little bit. I don't want to go too long, but the the scale was meant to be symmetric and balanced, where your medium's dead center, and it's five per bucket, seven buckets, because it's very common on roast bags, or you know, if if roasters are already describing it, customers are used to five circles where they circle in or they color in the roast level. So they're used to a symmetric, you know, representation, which I think is a lot easier to understand than, oh, it's a 55 or I like a 58 or a 62, you know, you could say and the think, number here, but you could also yeah. just say it's a medium dark. That makes sense. And I think, and I think, I think it's, a, and it's, it's a step in the right direction. Like you, you're starting to attach the, the, the medium, the word medium with, with, with a, uh, a quantitative, uh, a number. I mean, it's, 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 it's quantitative. You could say a medium is somewhere between 15, 16, 17, something like that, or, you know, so I, I did a, uh, quite a few readings and uh, from a couple different roasters and I got everywhere from, I think six, five, almost down to five, all the way up to about 20. But I, I did not get into the, 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 the 30 range. Um, and, and that has a lot to do. And, and there's one thing that we have to mention here that this is really, well, um, I, I, I won't answer the question. I'll ask you the question. Can you do whole bean coffee with this? No. So this this is not designed the way that the way that it works. You fill it with the ground coffee. You tap it to level. So you need to have a flat bed. You know, because it's not a top mounted sensor like a lot of the other units. It's reading from the bottom up. It needs to have the the flat level when you tap it down. So yeah, no whole bean, which is I imagine we'll talk about, is very very widely used. And 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 yeah, and I think here's an example of, uh, of a couple of a couple bags that you sent out. And, and yeah, that, that one is very dark on the left. Yep, that's a five. I mean, that's even darker. But you know, and um, 
on the right. And then on the left, we have a, a medium dark 11, which, which, which still, you know, it, it, it's, but so it works with ground coffee, but we have to remember that ground coffee incorporates the outer along with the inner. And it is really just a blend of the overall development of that coffee. There's still it's value not, in that information. Absolutely. 100%. Absolute value. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for the price that you're paying for this machine, because it's probably the cheapest, I'm sorry, the most affordable, <laughs> the most, the, the one that I would buy uh, for specific reasons. But if you are in a quality control lab, and I, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will say that this does not, this is not the end all be all for all quality control. If you, if you've got, if you're roasting a million pounds a year, you should probably know what the outside is and also what the inside is. So you can take those two numbers be that spread to show how that, that your roast development is working because that's extremely important. But if you are in, in a quick need of analysis, if you're behind the bar at a cafe, if you don't own a roasting facility or you're just buying coffee that's already roasted and your customers want to have a medium roast around 15 and you don't have time to figure it out, or if you do, but you just don't quite know, or if you're a roaster, I mean, this is a great, I mean, I got a free one, so I'm going to talk about it for an hour. And I think you all should, I'm not going to sell this one. Hell no, heck no, 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 no I'm not no, selling I mean, it. I'm not selling it. It sounds, John, it sounds, it. Like, sounds like to me that what little bit you've gotten to, uh, is that a word, gotten, um, to play with that, that you see some value in it, that you see some some end user before I brew that coffee, what I can expect out of that last batch. Well, and, I, and I also used it here. So like, uh, you know, I, uh, my day job, we do a lot of, uh, we, we, we have a toll roasting uh, relationship. So we, uh, at the Arbor Day Foundation, work with uh, uh, roaster out of uh, St. Louis Colleges and they have a, they have a Javalytics, right? So that, that's a different scale. Sure. It's, it's a different, it's, it's, it's uh, accurate in, in, in different ways, has a, has a whole bean and a grind, uh, but I don't at home here. So I, I look at their numbers that they send me and, I, and I'm now looking at the numbers that I have here and I calibrate them every week. And so now the 15 is related to, let's say their Javalytics ground was a 64.6. On, on this scale, it was 15. Um, on their Javalytics ground for another copy was 66.9. And on this, it was a 12. So John, um, do you think, and we ought to get Zach in on this conversation, but do you think, let's say you're, you're a buyer of coffee from whomever, and you, you want to know that they're consistent with what they're selling you. Um, is that a tool that you'd, you'd have that, you know, periodically you go, okay, this medium roast last month or two months ago, uh, I, I got that and it was a, yeah, I mean, it, it puts it puts it puts a lot of power in the person who's buying your coffee to say, "Hey, I mean, either either this thing doesn't work, it shifted somewhere, yeah, either this doesn't funny. work, or uh, you know, someone something's happening with the roast profile, and you know, just hey, and yeah. it, and it's it's a nice QC. Check. I'd love to have a customer say, "Hey, uh, seems a little a little darker this week, or something like that," and then they can have a chat and can, you know improve quality across the board. So this is a great tool, Zach. Yeah, or, absolutely, Zach. What, how, how have you found the response? so far i mean you're in daily coffee news right it's yeah. great no it's 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 been it's been getting big and I, I think you know kind of i don't know if we wanted to go over the current slide or the or the one that was before is a little bit tied together but no it's it's super important having a being able to have an affordable tool that you can you can validate what the roast is you're you're kind of involved in that and i think the main thing you know kind of going back yes it's limited because you can't do whole bean you can't compare outside to inside and talk about how even was your roast but I think one of the biggest values is being able to communicate with your customers, re reliable and objective roast levels, right? So this, this is an example from Rabbit Hole Roasters. Absolutely love them. This is a six out of six dark. It's the darkest that they sell. And when you measure it on the left, at least on the roast vision, it's an 11. It's medium dark, right? But if I was expecting their six out of six dark to look more like on the right half, the five very dark. As a customer, I might be disappointed or I might think, wow, it doesn't really have those, those roasted flavors that I'm expecting. I bought the darkest one they can roast, but it's, it's not really as, it's not oily, right? If, if someone thinks the dark has to be oily, it's kind of a mismatch of expectations. So that's kind of one of the other, it's probably the, one of the biggest values is having an objective way to communicate roast to customers as well as across the, you know, across the board. Um, so as you know, on these yeah. photos, and then what here, you know, what we found is, 
Yeah, what and is of course, this? this yeah. yeah, this is dependent on okay. the way that we calibrated our scale. But what this is showing, and this is kind of this is very small sample. We're working to potentially add, you know, some some ways that other people can add their data. What this is showing is it's comparing the measurement on the roast vision to what the roaster describes their roast as. So just to, to kind of sum it up here, roasters, at least the ones I've tested, which is US specialty coffee roasters, they tend to overestimate how dark. So they'd say a medium dark is a dark. They would just say, oh, this is our darkest, but it's really only a medium dark because they don't want to waste the quality in a good bean, right? They're not going to roast as dark as another roaster because you know there's a lot of good character in their beans. But then on the flip side, they also overestimate how light their bean is. They say they're very light. And this, I think, John, you might be able to relate to this. If they say this is the lightest we sell, but it's only a 20, there's 10 other points or 15 other points where they could roast lighter, you know, to get into the 30, 32, 33 range. So at least with our scale and the samples that we've looked at, there is a communication difference. And right? I love it's a little tricky to, to see yes. what's true. And that point is very important because Marty, I know you you know this, like different roasters like a like Civets to San Francisco to Probat and Dietrich, we all have different uh, uh, times and first cracks of mm -hmm. different types of coffee. And we're all, you know, we're, we all have different calibrations of how they all speak. act just a little bit, little bit different. Yeah. And, and with Agtron and, and, and also with Javalytics and also with language, we have sure. a lot of mismatch. So like when we said number 55 on the, on the SCA, uh, you know, like thing, like 55 is that, you know, like, I, I don't think it's burnt. There's a lot more to go there. But like yeah. it depends on what you're looking at and, and which which scale you are referencing. Sure. So it's really important that are it, you on the gourmet scale or in the commercial right. scale? Um, and, and so Zach, do you exactly. have do you have a document or will you put out a document that will, you know, have like a reference point of like here's your Agtron gourmet, here's your Agtron uh, commercial, here's your Bigfoot something or other, and then your Javalytics um, as a chart so everybody can just kind of uh, calibrate. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's one. That's really our main priority right now. Is once we have the funds, the resources to to get a device that can take those readings. Yeah, we'll I'll, I'll roast up forty or fifty samples across the board. Cap, you know, take multiple measurements and and put up a conversion chart because that's the biggest uh, you know biggest thing that people have asked is so how does this relate to Agtron? You know, so because it is such a known standard, right? It's already used in the industry. Right. That that's our main priority. And, and so you, you know, you have a huge yeah. audience of coffee people right here with Marty uh, and and I and you know the Coffee Technicians Guild, the SCA. Could you send out a five pound bag to twenty roasters that have Javalytics and 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 just have everybody do the work and then make it a document that the SCA could share? Right? Totally. Yeah. Something no, I'm, like I'm definitely that. open to that. Yeah. There's some people working on some stuff right now that you know, hopefully I'll hear back. But yeah, definitely the more more the merrier in terms of crowdsourcing that conversion scale. And what's going on here? So this is a little, I, I don't know if I'd call it first crack vision. I might need to come up with some better names, but. Oh, this is the conclusion. Are we? Are yeah, we this, is, oh, this is a different, yeah, that was, that was a let's, different product. Uh, let's go back to uh, real quick. I just want to talk about this little competition. We're, we're kind of getting to the end of the show. we got 15 more minutes left. So if you haven't had a chance yet to go on Instagram, uh, you know, if you're watching yeah, this, uh, please go to Absolutely. Instagram and tag a friend on at uh, Espresso Vision, tag a friend. And then uh, subscribe uh, to uh, the, the YouTube channel, uh, Coffee Tech Talk Tuesday. Make a nice friendly comment about something, just like, hey, everybody. And then we're, we're gonna pick a winner here in about 10 minutes for one of these little guys. And let's watch that video on how to um, use it. I, I do have it here, Dietrich, I can just play it real quick. And so, yeah, I. It's as simple as it looks. Although if you are this fast, you probably have had too much coffee. I do like you had like the whole like one or two times the speed, but you just kind of, you know, just pop it a little bit on this and then just you're done and just wipe it out. And um, and now I wish that the, you know, I'll tell you this, Zach, the only thing that you forgot to put into the box is, is, a, is a little one fourth of a teaspoon because it's everything else is great, but you got to get that one fourth. Tea, I'll pay an extra $2 for that. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking about that earlier today. Some other, yep. some other little tricks. Because I was the treats. Because I was using a cupping spoon, and I'm like, this is too big, you know. But like yeah. that one fourth of a teaspoon is the perfect size for that. And 
you know, I thought it wasn't working at first because I tried four different coffees and then I did go and I sourced other coffee roasts from other, and it was drastically different. So it, it absolutely um, did work. And I, I, I'd love to do more of this kind of calibration with, with you. And so this is the, again, this is the scale. Awesome. Um, I got a bunch of questions for you before we go into what's next, okay, for you. Actually, that might be the last question I have here. So this is my rapid fire question for you. Um, What's been the most common roast level out of all the samples you have tried? It's a good question. Probably tw twenty or so. So you're okay. If I if I have to if so, the most common roast level is a twenty. To, yeah, and that's really just because of what I've bought. And the four twenties right? Fahrenheit, low four twenties. Well, for me, it's been it's hmm. been the fifteen sixteen range. So that'd be an interesting geographic wow. study too. And also, like, who's buying what and why and where and, and all that stuff. So, what's okay. the lightest or the darkest you have you have analyzed? Lightest I ever I ever checked was a thirty three from Regroup Roasters. It's an Ethiopian, by far the lightest. I think the second lightest I've had is probably a twenty seven. Okay, and that was like from a from an actual commercial roast that someone yep. did out there. Okay. Yep, out, out I believe out in Phoenix. Okay. And then the darkest. Darkest might be a. Might be a six, but I can't I can't recall commercial. You know which which is it which it was from. I know you know I've roasted plenty that kind of go down into the five range. That's about as dark as I'd like it, but commercial yeah. probably a six. I mean, well, if you get get much hotter than four fifty one, you remember Fahrenheit four fifty one, the book. Yeah. That's where yeah. paper burns. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so if you get much more past. 450 you're you're risking catching it on fire so and i, I think the I, other thing surprised. to add real quick the temperatures are really just approximate right it was we didn't have them at first and then people were asking you know customers were saying well what does it kind of refer to and i i included just for reference these are from an ileo bullet r1 v2 this is the ibts temperatures so if yeah, i use the probe temps that 468 might be 450 right just because the probe is running a little bit colder so Really, just for reference, 202 is first crack, and then, you know, at least on these beans. So it's it's tough because it's for reference and it's, it's tough yeah. to use. And that's but. An extremely important uh, point to make because on a Dietrich or on a Probat, if you hit 480, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, yeah. Marty, have you ever hit 40 on a Probat? Or yeah, we call the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, usually like into the second crack 25 percent of the second crack yeah. it's starting to die out yeah. you know on exactly. 445 450 you know tops and then after that it's like yeah. uh, so anyway so it's it's important that like this if it says bullet then that will ease everybody's mind and convince them that hey this is not a crazy scale this is just a accurate to the device in which you're using which we haven't even talked about what you were doing at Boston University, which uh, maybe that could be another next episode of like, how did you get so smart? Or maybe you were just born that way. I don't know. But um, that's not a question. Uh, how does this unit compare to other color readers? I think we kind of addressed that. I yep. think it, you know, Marty, any, any, uh, so yeah. Um, well, obviously, no, go ahead, Zach. I, we'll let you, you yeah, do I think, that. I think the, you know, in terms of features, I, I, I'd answer it this way. It's, it's definitely the most affordable. It's, it's comparative in terms of accuracy to some of the other models. But the one thing I would say just to, you know, be a little more technical, there's two real main types of roast level sensors. One is a color sensor and one is a refractom refractometer, sorry. So this one is only looking at a specific wavelength of light, sending out that pulse and measuring how much comes back. I know other devices in the market like the Tonino, that's using RGB, so it's actually finding the color as an RGB or, or some other color space value. And it's mapping that to roast. This is just looking at a specific wavelength near infrared, which I believe, I don't want to, you know, I'm not sure perfectly, but I know, I think roast right also uses near infrared. Um, so there's really two main types. So this is near infrared is the way this So what works. is, well, the, the one thing I was going to say more logistically, it's that it is limited to the, the ground which is your combination of outside inside um, where the others have the ability to do that. I don't know if you're getting into that, but the market um, for what I see people using this, I don't see there's a need for them because they're, unless you're, unless you're a roaster and want to be the best roaster in town and, and want to go to that level. Um, if you're a consumer um, or a purchaser of coffee, 
this is the ideal tool tool for you, not a Javalytics or an Ag, Agtron. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, opens, well, it opens it, up it opens up uh, bottles too. By the way, yeah, it's it it, it it will definitely open. give you consistency of of product. It's and the only the only thing you need to do is uh, just plug it into your computer, and it's a uh, it's got the power source, and uh, so that that's. I mean, it's pretty sweet. I think that if you are a roaster or even a cafe owner, that this is something that can get you in the door to, to better understand, uh, uh, you know, the world of, 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 of color yeah. uh, and uh, Absol calibration. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Um, so what's your most frequently asked question about this product? It, it'd be Actron conversion. You know, how does it, what's your scale based on? What is, okay. what's the conversion? Yeah, we get that one a lot. Yeah. And so how do you handle tech support for products? Like what happens if this busts? Like how, how, how fragile is this? Well, I mean, if, if, if you told me you were opening bottles with it, we might have uh, some, some tough questions, but no. If, I mean, if you're it, slamming it down. You're like, you tap it. And like, some people are going to be like. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. And, and especially, you know, the, the good thing is, I think our, our policy is on the website, but if it's just the, the 3D printed housing, if something breaks, if it drops, we can replace it. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what the policy is, but, but as long as the electronics don't break, you send it back. I'll make you a new one, recalibrate it, and it's good right. to go. And this was made on a three D. This is made on a three D printer. The at housing, the, yes. At, at the library, at not, uh, <laughs> not at the library. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, it'd be cool. Where, where, sure. where is it, in, it? Where did you get it done? Like, was it was it was it outsourced, or did you do it yourself? Or so we're three D printing lab? here, but that's kind of you know moving forward. It's something for, for improving quality, right? You know, 3D printing is, is great for prototypes, but you, you know, there's there's a lot of ways to improve and making it more durable, more, you know, just a little bit more professional of a product, but 3D well, printing yeah. for now. Do you have any promotions or exclusive news to share other than the one that we we're giving away tonight in about uh, two minutes, we're gonna give it away. Are we doing another one or is that off the table? Sure, yeah, yeah. So just for people that are, you know, watching the video, we'll give away a second one next week. You know, we're going to keep it yeah. a little, you know, low key, only people that have seen the show. Um, I think the same rules apply, <clears throat> you know, comment on the Instagram, comment right. here in, in the video, and then we'll pick one next week at the show. Um, for yeah. the person we picked today, I'll get it out in the mail tomorrow. And then next week, I'll, I'll do the oh, same yeah. once we, once we follow up. That's, That's awesome. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really appreciate you doing that, Zach. That, that, um, that's Party. huge. Hey Marty, did you did you go to the Instagram and tag a friend? And are you? No, I, I I didn't. Um, I I should have. I I did share it, but I didn't tag right. anyone. Um, I know Mike King. I know Mike King's out there. Um, he needs to be tagging some people if he. All right. Well, so here already. here's the. I guess we got the party words. It's about eight o'clock, and you know it's a big day for the entire planet. Uh, and the United States. So, uh, and I think that a lot of things close in about well, six minutes. So we're all going to be looking at the at the results. But before we we start seeing what's going on with the whole government stuff, let's 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 see who the real winner is tonight and who wins this product. Yeah, that's that's uh, the, that's the key thing right now. Dietrich, <laughs> who who wins the color reader position uh, in the United States of free color? reader position <laughs> I, I don't know Try about it. that but yeah if you guys want to go ahead and start give give one of these suckers away we can and then okay uh, i'm gonna do it like i'm gonna do it right now i'm gonna go on instagram <laughs> and right. uh how dietrich could you could you help me are you on on your instagram can you tell me I how many people on, i can hop on the instagram give me one and, second and so here. i'm gonna i'm gonna give marty and and zach i'm gonna give both of you uh uh something to do here but first i have to know uh, dietrich how many sure. people there are um on Instagram. Okay, give me one second here. This is exciting. Everybody still has a minute to, to sign up if you haven't commented yet. Actually, you have to comment, so maybe on YouTube, it'd be easy enough to just, you know, comment here who's on YouTube. Okay. And, and Marty, if you want to sing a tune or if you want to talk about something or Zach, can you tell me a little bit, actually, since what, while we're here, what got you to do this? And you were talking with Marty about where you where you were going to school? Like where did you go to yeah. school? Sure, yeah. So so Espresso Vision started as a as a pressure profiling tool. This is for uh you know Flare making you know I, I wasn't working for Flare or anything, but um, it was a pressure profiling algorithm. Started it kind of last summer. Worked on it through a uh, through a product innovation course at BU, Boston University, is where I, where I go to school. 
I was also, you know, last summer I started roasting on a popcorn more. popper, right? So I was just getting started um, and saw a lot of these devices in the market and said, it'd be kind of cool to make one. Made a little prototype last summer and just really kept oh. working on it throughout the school, tried to, you know, go for a competition there. 15. And then, you know, just kept working on it throughout the summer, decided that, you know, it was a product that we wanted to release. And that was kind of a simplified long story there. But And so wait, what do, what's next? Well, we have so, not talked about what's next. Yeah, let's go to that. What's next? What so yeah, this? what this is this is a little bit of research we're doing. I've talked to some people about it. We're working on it. It's a it's a first crack air sensor. And this was something I can't take credit for. This was Rob Hoos. I I did a ILEO oh, yeah. class, yeah, and yeah, yeah. he said I don't look at first crack or, or paraphrasing here. He said he'll smell with the trier, and when he smells vinegar for the third time that's when he marks first crack in his, in his profile. I mm. said, vinegar, that's, that's very interesting. At the time I was working with some air sensors just for fun. And he said that, and it blew me away. I was like, I can test that tomorrow. I threw that sensor in my, in the exhaust or not in the exhaust, kind of outside the exhaust, keeping it cool. And you can measure TVOC content surge right, right around first crack. You know, obviously you have to keep your fan constant. Cause if you turn your fan up, TVOCs are going to surge because you're blowing more. So keeping everything constant there, there's a huge surge. The red line is when I heard first crack. And, you know, the graph is showing kind of your TVOC content on, on this specific sensor. So that's something we're working on. A few roasters have reached out, said it's pretty interesting kind of, you know, so there's some, some interesting things there, but we're also hey, working the, on, yeah. For the layman that's people, awesome. Zach, can, can sure. you explain what TVOC is, what you're sensing there? Totally, so TVOC is total volatile organic compounds and vinegar is one of them among many of the other smells, chemicals, compounds that's, that's being released when you're roasting. There's all kinds of things being released into the air. Um, so this is really just saying right at first crack, you know that something's happening physically with the bean. It's releasing a lot of different compounds and you could pick that up and have an objective measure of first crack that's not sound or, or you know, some other metric. Wow. And do you anticipate, um, you said that you were putting that sensor out so it didn't overheat. It, physically, logistically, however you want to say it, do you foresee a spot within the roasting system that you could put for a long-term sensor? Um, to consistently give you these readings? Sure, and I, yeah, and I have to be a little careful with, with kind of the, the uh, things I, I talk about here on, on the way that we would do that. Because yeah, the main thing is temperature. And the sure. main thing is if you are exposing a sensor to a huge amount, if you're exposing it to coffee smoke right out of your vent, it's going to be contaminated. You're going to lose sensitivity. Hey guys, so there's a lot of, a lot of things you have to do, but yeah, I think real, we're out of time. Real quick, we have one question from uh, Quartz Quilter. Uh, he wants oh, to know- Oh, that's my aunt. Okay, uh, where, okay, well, she wants to know where, where you can buy that product. Well, that'd be on my website, Aunt Linda. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh, what's that website? Espressovision.com. So it'd be the same thing, you know, with our yep. Instagram, you can find everything there. Hey, everybody, it's eight o'clock. So I want to make sure that we kind of wrap this up. We're going to talk a little bit more, but I want to select the winner right now so we don't have everybody hanging on. Uh, so we've, uh, Marty, pick a number between one and one and five. Oh, and, three. And, and, uh, okay, three. And then, okay, and I'm going to, um, hold on a second. Okay, and then Zach, I, I want you to pick a number between uh, uh, two and, and six. Five. So we... There's a, that's a negative sign. So it looks, subtract, I can't so, see the number on, on that. Okay. Oh, no. I, I, right. So, um, Marty, you said three. Zach, you said six. I, I was going to do it. You said five. Oh, so you said, you said five, five. And, you, and you said three. I was going to do a, a positive or a negative sign. So we're going to add those numbers or subtract them. So we subtracted them and we got two. So All instead right. of, you know, if we added them, it would have been oh, number eight. Yeah. So it's not the eighth one down. It's the second one from the top of, of the Instagram post. It should not equal me. <laughs> All right. So the was, second was the this... second person from the top of the Instagram post. <laughs> and it can't will, be was this in the point. fine print. <laughs> no, so it's just. The, the second choice will be once once their profile loads, it'll be uh, CC Gale MT or CC G-E-I-L M-T. And let's make sure that it's not a family member or something. That, I think, let me just check. I think that actually might be my oh, Christine. cousin. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, okay. Yeah, All right. So then family. the second one after that will be Meadowlark Lincoln. 
Oh, that's right. They get it. All right. And that's Kate. And I know him. And that's lit. That's legit. So there <laughs> you go. Yeah, All they're right. friends of ours. And they are, they, they do roast their own coffee. Uh, they, they are a cafe also. And this will be a great useful tool for them. Awesome. And they were just on top of this. So, you know, kudos to them for participating. But I don't know if they made a comment in the YouTube section. So, well, uh, well, again, we'll hey, have to find out. But uh, if if you're looking to potentially get your hands on one of these and you don't have Instagram or you missed out on this on this uh, giveaway, we're going to have some details on uh, Zach's Instagram pop up. But ultimately, it will be chosen from the comment section of the replay of this video. So the live chat's not available once uh, once the video goes on to replay. So if you pop back in, watch the video and drop a comment real quick, then you can uh, you can get your hands on one potentially next week. So once this video goes down, give us give it a like, give it a comment, subscribe, and make sure to follow Zach on on Instagram, and we'll we'll be able to get you hooked up potentially with a, with one of with one of those. Yeah, we're just great with uh you know with all these giveaways. <laughs> yeah, really got this organized. I mean, this was tough. I mean, we're like you got to tag a friend, you got to be on Instagram, then you got to watch the show, and then you got to comment something on the show. So I, I'll give the benefit of the doubt to Kate. You're out there and watching. If you if if you are not, I I you got to watch it before he's going to send it out to you. That's, and then you got to comment. I mean, that's that's just going to be the deal. That's right? that's a bare minimum. You got to you got to watch if, the show. If if yeah. Kate doesn't reach out to us about being like, hey, we want we want our free uh, our our winning yeah. uh, espresso vision, then uh, we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, I, or anybody at Metal Arc, it, it's all, all right, good. Right and on. and hey, everybody, thanks a lot. And um, uh, it's been great. Yeah, yeah this, thank you guys so much. Yeah. We'll, we'll chat with you uh, next week. We'll we'll announce the winner as the first thing we're going to talk about next week. So we're going to give a little plug uh, for you next week too. So um, oh, and and during this week, anybody who's watching this video, um, make sure to comment and also uh, tag a friend on Espresso Visions. Yeah, and don't Espresso forget it'll Vision. be the comment of the replay of this show. So give this give yeah. it about 10, 15 minutes. Pop back in, refresh the page, and then you can leave a comment there if you want to be entered for next week's giveaway. So yeah, again, and you can watch it all week. Yeah. Well, until Tuesday. Oh, which is next. All right. <laughs> Bye. Cut us off, Dietrich. We're done. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you.